this morning to put together a little review based off of my birthday gift to myself. <laughs> I finally picked up an ink that I've been wanting for a while. It's um, Noodler's Dark Matter. It is a black ink. And whenever I look online, you know, a lot of people say, okay, it's an... Um, a novelty at first they they look at it and they're like okay it's just another black ink and then they try it out and they genuinely enjoy it it's something that you know people say they wind up using and using a lot of the story behind this ink is that um noodlers who is nathan tardif uh received a bottle in the mail or a correspondence of something uh, a bottle of ink that was labeled with a few different numbers that they believed was from the facility um, where they had the Manhattan Project. And this is um, Oppenheimer and it's quote, now I can become death, the destroyer of worlds. So um, there's a really cool, interesting you know, story behind the sink where um, Noodler's Nathan Tardif had, um, you know, I guess looked at the ink and reverse engineered it to have the same properties as the ink that they believe was used in that location. So really cool ink, really cool background story. It's something that I wanted, so I got it for myself for my birthday. And also got a pad of rodeo paper with a line since I've been tr practicing my um, handwriting and script as well. I got into the inks in regards to art, and now it's, you know, <laughs> penetrating every avenue of my life, uh, fountain pens and inks. So without further ado, um, I have a Parker Parquet that I had, um, filled this up with, and this is, um, I guess I think it was like bottom of the line Parker pens back in the day. So, you know, I got it for cheap. I, I re-sacked it and whatnot, and, um, you know, it was a cool experiment. So I loaded it up with this because I felt like this ink needed to be into some, something, um, you know, kind of serious, something a little classy. So, um, I'll just do a little bit of writing with this. Uh, one of the issues that I face is I'm left-handed and I'm relearning how to do script, where when I learned in school, I did that overhand. I was an overwriter. And then I think more of a left to right, but you know, with that, you run the risk of smearing. So I've been working with underwriting and I kind of developed my own little style with, um, I guess it would be printed letters, for example. And I'm not sure how great it's going to show up since I'm using my um, my phone and this is the distance that I'm able to get. So I'm probably about, say, 14, 16 inches up high from it. So anyway, so this is my printed that I've been working on with the underhand. So uh, hopefully I don't make any spelling errors while I'm in the middle of a video. Quick. Brown fox jumps over. I'll just keep it in here. Uh, lazy. Uh, so this is kind of my um, printed script that I've been working with, where. I've been adding a little bit of flourishes. I guess there's a little bit of cursive involved in it. And then I have been working on my um, my script itself, which is a little weird because I'm doing the whole underwrite thing. And I won't be able to talk as much while I do this because you know, relearning the skill, there's <laughs> the thinking I have to have. So I've been getting a little caught up with um, my R's 
my N's and uh, my Z's. But I've been working on it and it's been fun. So that is Noodler's Heart of Darkness in a... I'm guessing this would be considered a fine lined pen. We'll do a little... Oops, see if we get a little bit of action there. One more figure eights. There we go. And I know down the line, figure eights are um, going to ultimately help me with my script. And I believe this type of motion as well. But when I do this one, I feel like I run the risk of eventually smearing. So I'm keeping an eye on that. And then there's, I guess, words that I've been practicing that seems to have that a lot. I think minimum is one. Let's um let's turn this paper on the side and we'll have Noodler's Dark Matter on that written. I do remember learning script back in was fourth grade third or fourth grade anyway so that was out of a I guess a fine pen let's say now writing that I do run a little bit of a risk with um, my hand placement let's let's label this as fine label it as uh, Parker And then I figured I would try it in the triple tail, which is definitely not traditional. I, I think, um, you know, compared to that style of um, that pen right there, I should have um, grabbed an ebonite. Oh, I'm leaking. Should have grabbed an ebonite um, Conrad to put it in or something like that. That would have been pretty classy. Okay, so let's do this in the Ahab. I just cleaned this Ahab out. I had Noodler's um, Heart of Darkness in it. So I just rinsed out the feed and just used the bulb syringe. So there might still be some water in there. But it is flowing a lot right now. I might have actually cleared out some of the silicon that I'd put on the side. So there might be a little bit of airflow issue. <laughs> oh, got into a little script right there. Okay, so that is let's write this right here. English triple tail. We'll do um, a kind of F shape. And we can do the figure of eights. Figure eights, figure of eights. I'm not really applying much pressure for flex. Let's see how it looks. I'm getting some railroading. This one I don't have. Um, adjusted perfectly yet. But those do show, and this is something that I have read and it shows up in that dot, that it has a grayish green tint to it, I believe, which is really interesting. Um, Noodler's Zivago, Z-H-I-V-A-G-O, 
it is like kind of black, but it's more way green. This one has a greenish tint to it. You can see how wet of a writer this pen is, um, especially at first. But like I said, it might have been residual water from when I just flushed this pen. Uh, let's see. Let's try a little script. But I feel like I'm going to have to write bigger with it. Minimum. Um, let's see what else we could demonstrate this ink in. I grabbed a glass dip pen out of my art supplies. Now sometimes it seems to be hit or miss with inks. Um, I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see. Oh, it works. I'm not sure if it's catching the sound, but if you listen closely, you can hear the glass on it. Side so I can label it. Remember, I had gotten a glass dip, dip pen a few months ago. Um, I believe I had done some drawings with uh, some other uh, Noodler's inks. I don't know if I had loaded those up on, online, but that's something I'll have to do more of for you all because it has worked with um, a few other inks that I know of. Let's, uh, let me see if I can do a script of the glass dip pen, or at least practice. Okay. And at first I thought glass dip pens were like a novelty. And um, you know, when I started looking into it, people were like, oh, you take some fine sandpaper, change the, the tip and whatnot. I never did anything to this one or to my glass dip pens. At least I don't think I did. And they are definitely not a novelty. It's crazy how much ink that they hold all together. Obviously, there's the entire fact that it's made out of glass and you have to be careful with it. And um, you don't want to roll it off the table or breaking. But golly, I really like um, glass dip pen. It seems to be a little thicker than um, that, that pilot that I used. Um, it might just be the flow rate or something off of this. So... Obviously, we can't do a flex test on this, but there you go. There's some straight lines with that. You can even do the eyes again. As you can tell, <laughs> this graph paper is going to be very helpful in my um, relearning of uh, script and working on my handwriting. So, uh, let's see if there's anything else that we can do. Oh, some people, I think, do like the wetness. I don't know if um, that's a good test of like the pen itself or of the um, the ink itself. Let me put this glass dip in away. I think we're got the point with that one. Pun intended. Haha. <laughs> Let's take that Parker fine. Okay. Which is weird because what I read was, you know, there was a dr little bit longer drawing time with this. But I'm not experiencing too much. 
Let's, um, yeah, that must be more of a, just a test to see how wet um, the pen is itself. So, there you have it. Um, I will do a cover picture for the YouTube video where it'll be this picture and whatnot. Um, hope you enjoyed. It's a really cool ink with a really cool story behind it. Um, my degrees are in math and physics. Um, I teach math and physics. So it was kind of right up my alley. So if you know a, a painter, I mean, sorry, a science engineer person, a physicist, math, that um, that uses fountain pens. This might be a really cool ink to get them. So I'll take the picture right here. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. A um, whole bunch of links down below. As you know, I usually do um, painting tutorials on this channel, but I'm a big fan and a big proponent of Noodler's inks, their art qualities and um, price and whatnot. So I like to do reviews of their stuff. Um, and the people that I've communicated with that are the middlemen for Noodler's inks have been fantastic people. Like this uh, pen right here, they had um, they had sent to me when I was asking about uh, pens for art and whatnot. This ink is definitely gonna have a place in my writing rotation. And it's supposed to get progressively more waterproof over time. I could wet my finger. Let's see. Yeah, so some smearing took place right there. But I believe it's um, a longer process for that. And I think it's considered archival in the sense of um, waterproofness. All right. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed.